Hello and welcome to another episode of Honest and Melt with myself, Duncan Donuts and Mike, aka Tupids. And this week we've got special guest Stuart Dick from Torreveig and Mossburn. So Stuart, you are the second Scottish person to come on the podcast, I think, as has been pointed out by some listeners. So welcome. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, that's that's mad. You guys have been doing this for, what, just over a year now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. In fact, actually, it must be almost exactly a year since since we first met. Uh, yes. You live yeah. last year. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, well, yeah, that was going to be my sort of link into the sort of episode title. That, no, 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 it's good. You brought it up. So you may have a vague recollection of us bumping into you and shoving a phone in your face and going, ah, speak into this. Say something. Yeah. I think I think you got me fairly early in the day. So you guys were still, I could understand what you were you were saying. Oh, yeah. You were just very scared by what the hell we were asking you to do. <laughs> I remember that. You're going, sorry, what What are we doing? What What do you want? Yeah, but, asking yeah. asking me to pronounce the brand. That was that's always a challenge. <laughs> it yeah. was good. Oh, and I have to say, we are episode 47, and the episode title is Torah Vaguely About Whiskey. Eh? <laughs> So um, I understand you live in Speyside and you are the, we know that you are the uh, brand ambassador for Mosburn yeah. and Tour of Egg. So would you, do you want to give us a little synopsis on your yourself and your role? Yeah, so I am UK ambassador for UK Distillery. We have a rule on this pod, Stuart. You have to you say got, UK. You got to shout out, yeah, 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 UK. UK. Okay, right, okay. <laughs> I am UK ambassador yes. for uh, Mosburn Distillers and Tour of Egg Distillery. So... Uh, most of my time is spent in the UK. Oh God, that's going to get old. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to struggle with that. Um, I, this year I'm, I'm doing a bit of bit of Europe, so I'm going to spend a bit of time in Germany, the Netherlands, nice. Poland, and Italy. Is yeah. so I'm going to be finishing my year off with Milan, um, which is is that all festivals? Mostly festivals, so it'll be festivals with a little bit of time and trade kind of built around it. So like the week before, week after kind of thing. Um, yeah. So that's a kind yep. of a, an evolution of my role, which is pretty cool. So I will be I've been in this role two years come July. It's been mm-hmm. it's been a crazy almost two years. It's been mega busy, uh, all over <laughs> the shop, and I absolutely love it. It's great. <clears throat> It's uh, it's it's a the brand ambassador job was something that I was wanting to get when I joined the industry, and that's what I, that's what I was aiming for. So yeah. it's the dream it job. The dream you barely job. do any work, right? Brand ambassadors. It's just posing <sighs> and you know networking, <laughs> pouring a couple of drinks, and telling someone Look to do some it. sales. Yeah, one festival, and he nailed. He's oh, nailed one it. festival. He's got, it in. he's got it done. It's in the bag. I've sussed <laughs> it all out now. One of the, the, the <laughs> coolest thing is like, oh, is the people. Um, so yeah. it's it's kind of odd timing. There's been stuff all over Insta today. Um, whiskey Exchange are doing a thing, hashtag we are whiskey. Um, so there's been loads of posts from yeah, folks saying, that. talking about what, what whiskey is to them and what have you. And I think that's one of the really cool things about this industry, about this about everything to do with whiskey, is people are really, really nice. Uh, every brand ambassador yeah. I've met is a really nice person, someone who you want to hang out with. Uh, everybody's super yeah. generous with their knowledge and their time. It's just, it's a really cool industry to be working in. You've actually given me a, a, a wee thought there, which is um, it would be nice to do the punter side of that, which would be hashtag we drink yeah. whiskey. I like it. <laughs> yeah. It's just a people. Look, listen, we drink a lot of whiskey and this is who we are. We've been drinking whiskey successfully <laughs> for several years. Uh, yeah. It's been a real graft. We've really dug in. It's been some fantastic people. A lot of bottles consumed. <laughs> I was going to be a group, like a moody bastard and say, if you want to know about my whiskey journey, listen to the podcast. Here's the links. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> anyway, Let's drive a, some yeah. traffic. So it's a real pleasure to have you on, Stuart. So thanks very much for that. Um, so why don't we, um, we're going to mix it up a bit today. We're going to do the usual Pudding Island Drams, uh, your choice of three, uh, Whiskey's Behind a Bar, Whiskey Room 101, recap a bit of uh, Croydon whiskey festival i feel like that deserves gunshots the old yeah the brap yeah. brap brap we can usually overlay that yeah. it'll sound even better put some explosions in 
Um, yeah. I thought we usually start, though, with a bit of an icebreaker, um, which is to um, apprentice, apprentice style? Definitely not apprentice style. Apprenticize, I, I think, is no, the official uh, made-up drag- word. Dragon's Den. Yeah. We usually start with a bit of a Dragon's Den style pitch. You know the drill. You know, we've been close-up camera. Mike and I have been talking about how we've been working our, you know, our asses off on this for years. Everything's yeah. invested in it. You know, we sold the cars and the houses. And we do the uh, the trip up in the lift. I assume you've seen Dragon's Den, right, Stuart, at some point? I have. I have seen yeah. Dragon's Den. Okay. So, <clears throat> you know, um, we do that uh, fateful walk out of the lift and we come into pitch to you and you're sitting there on your chair, you know, one leg um, saddled over the other, relaxed with a pile of cash on the little side table. 20,000 uh, uh, is what we're asking for. 20,000 pounds for 5%. And uh, we've come up with a business... Um, Glass, uh, t- uh, glass warmers, uh, ink. Uh, it's like imagine um, when you if you've seen Formula One or motorcycle racing, and they have those yeah. like electric tire warmers that you put around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just like that, but for your Glen Cairn or your Capita. So obviously, if you're not okay. sitting close to um, a radiator or a fire, you can just or you it's a little cold where you are. Obviously, this doesn't work great in a hot country. Uh, then you just put on your little um, tie warmer that wraps around. It just plugs in on USB or a, and you can just warm your um, warm your your dram up to the correct temperature, whatever that you've chosen twenty degrees, twenty one degrees, twenty two, etc. And then you just take it off. Great for great for the gram. So yeah, we're um, we're looking for twenty grand to get um, our Formula One style tire warmers off the ground. What say you? Well, I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna have to start with my my. Duncan Bannatyne response. <laughs> okay, is, he was a long time ago. To be... He said no to everything. Oh, yeah, this that, is yeah. not going well. That's <laughs> yeah. that's pretty much when I when I when I watched Dragon's Den last. Right. Um, what what's the point of this? I just put my hand <laughs> in my glass. Why do I need? Hey, warm up, Duncan. You've <laughs> got so Duncan. You, Duncan Bannatyne. You're dead inside, and everyone knows you've got very cold hands. If anyone needs <laughs> this product, it's you. <laughs> ah, well, in that case, I'm out. And we'll, and we'll... Oh, okay, fair enough, Stuart. All yeah, right. Duncan. Duncan was always Duncan was always my 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 favourite. Just the he was just man. he was brutal. It's yeah. just he was the one who who just he, yeah he would just come oh, loved him. Yeah. So, uh, do you find this a regular issue that your Glen? Cairns, I suppose my Glen Cairns are often are often a bit cold. It's actually more of an issue. It's more of an issue to keep coming up with innovative, yeah, uh, crazy I, I ideas. Think, actually, I would imagine that is a challenge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I'd also say is that you can get brandy glass warmers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You just put a tea light in there. So they kind of exist. Yeah. yeah, but Mike, it's not like a Formula One style tire warmer. You tell me, I'm not saying we're going to be selling these for like, it's expensive, like £75 a pop. This isn't cheap. This is high end stuff. This is for your flash people who are into are their motorsports. This is for like Coach Built it... Whiskey, especially yeah. for Coach Built Whiskey. Oh my gosh, what, what a thing. In that collaboration would be with Jensen Button. And Coach Built Whiskey, we're doing the you, F1 style glass. You take warmer. it off when you're ready to get dram in. Oh, amazing. And then perfect temperature. To, what if you were changing glass? You've got to get someone in to come and really quickly swap glasses. Yeah. <laughs> little pit stop, yeah. <laughs> oh, we could have a little pit stop section as I, well. I want to now get, get you guys a, like a, a couple of crocheted Glen Cairn holders for your Christmas and send them to you. I just imagine you two <laughs> walking around Love a it. festival with a wee crocheted. Uh, you know, multicolored crocheted <laughs> glass warmer. Hang off glass. Sounds oh. delightful. I don't think I might get one knitted. Yeah. I might get one knitted. I'm going to get like a little glass. But it won't be as cool as my USB plug-in. Imagine going to like a festival uh, table and then they you've got your glass and they pour you the dram and then you just plug it into like a USB and you you, you stand there for five minutes whilst it's just it's really awkward in their faces. Right in, go. Yeah. yeah. So I'm so it, sorry. It, I just need it, to wait. It's almost Is it going to be good? 18.8 yeah. no. degrees, 18.9 degrees, oh. 90, 90, 90.1, 90.2. I'd love to watch that from the next stand, to be honest. That would just be, yeah. just, just what, just, I don't know who would feel more uncomfortable, you or the, the BA on the stand. I think it would, it would give, be a toss up. We'll, we'll give it a that's, go. That's if Guinness made whiskey, you know, they would have something like that already. Like a, yeah. uh, you just place your glass in it and it vibrates it to make heat and yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we should uh, we should um, do um, what's in your glass and what's been up your ass. So uh, happily start with yourself this week, Stuart. What have you got in your glass and uh, what's been up your ass recently? So in my in my glass, I am I am not on brand. Oh, right 
Fair play. I, I mean, I, I am also on it. brand because I have, I mean, I am triple parked right now. So technically, it, I am on brand as well as being not on brand. I guess um, you're not going to tell us you're drinking Talisker, right? <laughs> no, no. Um, I, I am. I am not. Um, that that would be. I think that would be flown properly off brand. I think that would be. Yeah. So no, I am. Um, I got a bottle on the other I, side of the island. Yeah, I got a bottle that I I bought myself before Christmas. Um, it's been out a little while. It's from Cask Noir. I take it to the brig. It's the uh, Cameron Bridge bottling that was. I'm not sure whether it was finished or matured in a PX Hoggy, but it's been in a PX Hoggy, uh, bottled at 57%. Cracked this open the other night. It's been sitting there. Cool label, though. So, yeah, like it's, um, they, they, all of their labels on the Cask Noir. So it's Brave New Spirits is the company. Okay. Um, yes. on, their, on their Cask Noir bottlings, it's like a movie poster. That's, that's what it's supposed to look like. Almost like a classic movie poster. They've yeah, got various other ranges, um, but yeah, it's a, it's really cool. So like it says, <laughs> featuring flavors of uh, like where you would normally have the actors and mm. stuff. So it's a it's a really interesting kind of different style to bottle. Um, is it are the tasting that. notes matching up to what you're getting? This has been our latest bugbear recently of just completely random tasting notes, nothing like the actual liquid. Um, so treacle tart, Spanish ice creams, intense sweet fruit, vintage biker jacket. So I left my notes inside, but yeah, I had written down biker jacket. That's nice. Vintage I'm stealing. I mean, that. I had. I'm having for, that. <laughs> I had written down leather on the taste because it did taste like taste like leather. Um, I'd written down creme anglaise. Um, so yeah, they do. They do match up. They match up pretty well. Nice. Oh, that's good to hear. Well done. Good job by them. Yeah. yeah so, and so has anything been... annoying you? Has anything been annoying you? Yeah. Um. Uh, more than just the, the last week. Really, the last almost two years. And I've okay. just, I've been traveling a lot more recently. Um, mm. And airport security, or rather, people at airport security, is my <laughs> is my biggest do, bugbear. Do you remember when they started to bring that little stool in? And you have to put a leg up on it. Well, that started happening about three three ish years ago. And they, so, so they can oh, like so they feel can up the inside your of feet. your leg. Yeah, that's really oh, annoying. That little stool. It, wasn't that to like stop you having to take your shoes off? They can just go. Yeah, you uh, have to go I don't know, but there. I feel like that's just them really taking the mickey. Anyway, come back over to you. What's been? I feel like it was one security? person with a perversion from feet. <laughs> <laughs> Put your feet here. Let me just touch every single one that comes through. Oh, can you <laughs> can you imagine if you if you're a foot fetishist and you're going through airport security the day they make everybody take their shoes off? I mean, that oh. would be like your best trip ever. <laughs> But no, uh, my I, I... They, they probably exist. There's probably yeah. a lot of yeah. like, weird 100%. fetishes going on there, like in 100%. airport security. I mean, why else do you take their job? I think airport think security needs to have like a, an, an extra lane, um, and you have to do a test to qualify for that lane, and and you have to mm. be capable of actually getting your stuff out of your bag efficiently. Yeah. And and you understand that when they say take your iPad out your bag, you have to you know yeah take your the iPad take your iPad bag. out. The non-numpty oh. lane, the lane for just sane people who are paying attention, right? It just it drives it me, me off so drives much. Drives me nuts. And, and yeah. also, why don't they see? I've, I'm a, I'm now on a rant. I'm now on a soapbox. Why don't they it's make good. it wide enough for you to put up the two trays? You need two trays now. Yeah. Your tray for your yep. bag and your jacket. Your tray for your yep. electronics. Give us yep. give us space for two two trays. Yeah. Um, people can't use one tray. This is a problem. No. If you, if you gave them two, who knows what's going to happen? They're still going to start getting undressing. They'll be naked, just walking yeah. through the scanners. It'd be chaos. Last time I came back from London, they were doing they were doing a shoes thing, and and something which I recently discovered is that they just randomly throw in the take off the shoes job just to kind of yeah. keep everybody on their toes. No pun intended. <laughs> and, and Can I make a suggestion to you though, Stuart? What? Seriously, just one, just one time, one time when you're not in a rush, right, and you're not traveling with like minimum luggage you've got the luxury of having a bit more space you've got a bit more time just try this it's very liberating just get in the queue and make sure you've kept your belt on you've got some metal in your shoes keys in your pocket <laughs> your laptop coin. in your bag phone in buried deep in the bag yeah make sure you've got a few oh. liquids that are the wrong size stashed <laughs> in the bag somewhere right just go the whole hog if you've got, you've got as well. an hour to kill before your flight <laughs> stash stash a couple of pound coins in your sock, right? Because that takes them a while to find, right? And then the people, just the people who are in a rush, just look at their faces and just enjoy it, knowing you've got plenty of time. 
You've got loads of time. To that's play. evil. I like see, it. that's it's very that's, evil. That's time I could be spending on an even more overpriced Starbucks and like a <laughs> true a five pound bottle of water. Um, yeah. So that's, yeah, to be fair, that's fi- fifteen minutes out of the time in the uh, the whiskey shop there, trying to just blag decent whiskey because you've yeah. got to do that whole patter before you can have nice stuff. Yeah, <laughs> think of the, and, think and also of the depreciation you, on a realizing you can't buy the good stuff. You can only buy like yeah. the normal supermarket yeah. stuff that's uh, that's like with a different More. label on it. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah. idiots at airport security is is my my latest bugbear. Well, that's fair enough, especially if you're traveling a lot. Yeah. Respect that. Yeah. And yourself, Mike, what's been in your glass and what's been up your ass? So what's been in my glass, um, after you your tasting notes, I think you initially picked up on that peanut from the Long Branch. So I died into some Jim Beams. Um, so I've been going through just some rubbish Jim Beam. And then I settled on to watch the sort of rugby over the weekend, uh, the Knob Creek, just as bog standard Knob Creek. And absolutely, it took a hammer in. What a mm. lovely dram. And then I I finished it off with a somewhat sentimental rugby post about how you get excited when the ball's in the 22 and fever, oh. blah, blah, blah. So I pulled out a Fetakin 22 sample I had. So you got to, drunk, basically, and then just got emotional online. Yeah. So Fetakin 22. Um, yeah. Decent dram. I made no tasting notes. Couldn't tell you what it was like in the end. Just sat there and enjoyed it thoroughly. Whilst watching uh, the last game of the Six Nations, I, I assume yeah. Wales lost. I, I haven't seen that. I, but... Wales. I was I'm glad I married an Italian girl and did the modern gentleman thing of taking half of her name. So I've got a double barrel surname, half of which is Italian. So right. I'm using that now um, for the next year. I'm absolutely <laughs> fine with it because Wales came last. Mm. The, the worst performance in 21 years. It's a good time to be Welsh. <laughs> Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> That's what's been up my ass. Wales, yeah. rugby, awful. <laughs> you, you you led the conversation quite well. Oh, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. It's, uh, I think it's embarrassing initially, but yeah, from a geeky rugby side of things, it's probably like the youngest team we've ever had, and they will have learned a hell of a lot from getting battered. So onwards and upwards for the Welsh. Fair enough. We'll see. Yeah. How about you, Duncan? What's in your glass? What's been up your ass? What have you been drinking? Well, currently, um, I've poured the second blind sample from Paul Main from Whiskey Toasts. Okay. So thanks, thanks to Paul. So I'll see, uh, you know, how that goes. The last week, probably the highlight, the two highlights were um, both at Croydon Whiskey Festival. Um, mm. Highlight one was an Ardnamurkin, I think, blended with Shishibu. Um, it was about 130 quid a bottle. So the, I think one of the gentlemen from that stand came over and poured a bit for Libby and I near the end of the day. And goodness me, that was excellent. I mean, really, really fantastic. Yeah, it really just lingered for a long time. Definitely had the the, um, the Ardner DNA in it, but tasted you know a bit special. So I couldn't big that one up enough. Um, you could look it up online. I'll try to find a link for it or something. Obviously, it sold out ages ago. You never get hold of a bottle. So to try a bit was great. And... Um, also from Glasgow Whiskey Distillery, the Manzanilla one that people are harping on about. That's um, been everywhere. That's all I've seen. To be fair, though, there is a reason for it. So it, it's five-year full maturation in Manzanilla um, cask. Okay. Um, and I think it, I think it will, it will have used either the original or the triple distilled, one of the two court um, uh, sort of, you know, there's three types of new make that they, they have, that distillery. Um, <clears throat> and... It's got so much salinity in it and so much sort of um, tobacco and leather just up front. And then other things come through afterwards. Then you're getting kind of more fruitiness, um, maybe some toffee, etc. So it's just it really... vintage biker jacket? No. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get any... I mean, leather, maybe it's vintage biker jacket. But the thing is, is you know you're drinking. It's a standout one. So people were coming from all around the show to come and try that one, which was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot of chat about it. And... Um, I think for 59 quid, that's superb value. Um, yeah, I could actually, I'll do a re- little recap on. Um, I was going to say, so Croydon. for those that don't know, Duncan went and helped out on the Glasgow whiskey stand with Libby at the uh, Croydon Festival just gone. And yeah, you had a fun day. Yeah. So um, uh, Libby, um, at Dramatic Libby, kindly offered us to both be um, on stand or help out in some way. You couldn't make it. And I, uh, you weren't available on that day, but I could. And I thought, well, rather than go and really plug the pod, we'll go and help and see what it's like to be on the other side for uh, mm-hmm. for a day. 
I did used to do hospitality and things like that when I was a, a bit younger. So it's not like, you know, I've, I've served at restaurants and made your deed and worked in retail and worked at jewelers and all that kind of stuff. So I actually really enjoy the service side of things, servitude as it's known. Um, and um, so I, I, you know, I took it seriously. Yeah. Um, and it was really interesting to be, you know, not the punter to be um, serving on stand. Well, it's very busy that festival. I mean, it's getting busier and busier. And so, you know, if, if you've got one person on stand or two people, it literally means you can actually attend more people. You can chat to more groups. You can serve more whiskey. You can introduce more people. You can give people more spiel about, you know, give them the story of the distillery and discuss the different bottlings with them. So I found it really interesting. I had five takeaways. So my five takeaways were... Two, two curries, three Chinese. <laughs> yeah, five takeaways. <laughs> I had five takeaways about 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. <laughs> After being carried out. <laughs> so I actually didn't have a drink until really late on. I think maybe about... Four and a half hours in, I had one dram or something like that. So, um, because there was also a lot to remember. Libby was kind enough to give me like a run through, send me some information up front. So, give me the old um, whip through about what to go through. And then, you know, you get a bit more confident. I got the odd question from like super geeky people. Somebody asked specifically where the, um, where the peated, um, uh, barley come from. Oh, the like, yeah, oh, yeah right, the, where's okay. where the malts come from. There's someone specifically asked something. I've got no idea. Right. So, Libby had to help with things like that. Um, crisp in the end that's where it comes from um so anyway five, yeah. five takeaways first takeaway was people love the core range i'm not talking i'm talking about just generally anyone one person's mouth literally hit the floor they couldn't believe how good the triple distilled or the um the original was the fruity and uh, sweet mm. they've got three right they've got fruity and sweet and then they've got triple distilled which is like fruity and sweet and peated, biscuity yeah um and then the peated one which is kind of like sweet barbecue sauce type vibe with peat and um people were just really impressed with it and loved the price point loads of people were who were like whiskey but don't drink whiskey like in the same way we do right mm. who were there for the day and maybe had an interest thought it was incredible generally everyone loved it but those people really were blown away manzanilla was magic that was takeaway two uh takeaway three was simple price points so 49 pounds for core range easy to remember 59 pounds for single cast or small batch easy to remember it also makes it easy on stand you're like these are 49 these are 59 <laughs> And, and you explain how the new make from those is cast for maybe two, two and a half years and then has a finish in two and a half years. And because all of their small batch or single casts are around five years old, it actually made it really easy to explain because you're like, these are all around five years old. Then you can go through tequila, mm. cognac, Calvados, uh, the original, which is just like the amped up original. So it's virgin oak and bourbon, um, yeah. Manzanilla, which is a full maturation. Then four, flexibility in the new makes. Like, because... If you take the cognac one, you'd expect it to have more kind of dry raisins and stuff, but actually um, it has kind of the biscuity notes and vanilla ice cream coming through, right? Which is definitely from, because it's made using the same uh, new make as the triple distilled is made using. So I found that really interesting. And then the five fifth one <laughs> is a graft. People were lovely. <laughs> People were lovely. Everyone was a good crack, but it is a real graft. It is a busy old day. You don't get a moment because when it's busy, People are coming around and your job is to serve and chat. So it just goes really fast. Stuart, you must do a lot of this, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a, it can be a long day. It can be a really long day. Yeah. Um, actually, the, the, the festival that we met at, Whiskey Live last year, was the longest festival I think that I've, I've done. And the brightest moment in your day? Oh, yeah. it was when you guys came, obviously. Oh. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> the second brightest was weirdly when I somehow managed to end up in the Whiskey Live staff photo at the end because I was standing chatting to Christopher Coates. Everybody else was gone. We were chatting, having a dram, and they were taking a photo. And, he, and I was like, right, I'll step aside. He was like, no, ah! I was like, okay. Yeah. But no, it's um, so that was a that was two five and a half hour sessions. That was a right. very long day. Um, I think a um, couple of couple of things that 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 are always really worth um that help you get through it. First of all, you waited way too long for your first dram. Um, that always helps. Um, jelly babies or jelly beans or whatever your <laughs> sweet of choice sugar. is. Yeah, sugar. Um, and, and and shoes. Comfy shoes. Comfy shoes are the... Yeah, I had trainers on, so I did one of three. Yeah. Right? Um, but I yeah. just, I didn't, because obviously um, Libby was like, oh, you sure, go and you do it. But I was there, I really wanted to go for the experience of being on stand rather than just, you know, I was volunteering, right? So, I mean, there's no huge obligation. It's just about being responsible. So I really just wanted to, like, be on stand and, like, you know, see what we learn. There were some nice people that came over who obviously listened to the pod and um, had a good chat with them. Want to shout out to uh, iWhiskey. Nick came over for a bit. Also to Craig, 
uh, Craig actually has re- had a motorcycle accident two years ago and he was uh, lovely enough to say that the, the pod actually really kept him amused and laughing at some tough times in his life. So I want to give all the best and shout out to Craig. He had um, a, a motorcycle accident a couple of years ago and has been recovering from that. And um, he said that he actually loves listening to the pod and, you know, it kept him entertained in some sort of dark times. So we want to wish you all the best, Craig. Also, well, thanks for listening, Craig. Yeah, thank you for listening, Craig. We appreciate it. There was a few bunch. There was loads of people that came over that, and, you know, a bunch. So thanks very much to everybody. Anyway, I had a great time. So but it was very hard work. I think it's probably more fun to be the punter. <laughs> Uh, Duncan, knowing that knowing that you were at a festival behind the stand, oh, you're interviewing knowing... me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, yeah can, like I, I can tell I like by it. the tone, Stuart. You've gone into room. interview mode. Sat up, so I, yeah. uh, I, um, I, knowing that this was is that coming... a picture of Piers Morgan on your shelf behind? <laughs> just there, just behind you. Is that Piers Morgan? No, definitely not. He's being fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just ready to get attacked. No, now. you're not going to be attacked at all. No, 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 no. Oh, so okay. knowing knowing oh. that I was coming on, knowing you've been at the festival, I thought. I'm going to play a little game Festival Bingo with you. Um, there are certain oh, things that happen okay. like that, that most of us experience at every festival. I want to see which of yeah. these you got. So people walked yeah. up to the stand and asked for the oldest whiskey. No. Okay. Best oh. whiskey? Yes. Okay. Strongest whiskey? Yes. Most expensive? No. Okay. Did anybody say, and, and this is not throwing any shade in the slightest from me, did anybody mm-hmm. say, it will be better when it's older. No, because I was really persuasive. Okay. So, I mean, I, honestly, I mean, build the statue Physical now. Physical violence is not yeah. to be... <laughs> I, was, I was selling... I was I, I was giving them the whole spiel about how we do blind drams and we've done this X number, you know, 30 times or whatever, or 40 times. And the winning results of all time were five five-year-old whiskeys. People were like, <laughs> oh my God. I was going, And I was actually explaining to people that when you drink whiskey in a quicker period, maybe like 20 minutes, that actually... Um, you're probably better to be on the younger side. It's only if you're going to sit with a whiskey for like an hour or an hour and a half, then you're really going to get the appreciation from truly older whiskeys. So I was actually trying to educate people, nice. which I, I do actually believe because yeah. we've been through this journey ourselves. So sorry, I've gone all serious again. No, 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 totally. That's, that's, and, that, and that's kind of, that's kind of the, the point of why I, because these are, these are the things that come up time and again at festivals. Yeah. And, and that's the, exactly the conversation that, that yeah. we end up having. I only drink sherry. Um... No, I don't think okay. so. Um, I only drink unpeated. Yes. Okay. Yeah, of course, because you ask people for their preference. Yeah, and um, you know, um, yeah, whether they like peat or not peat, because it decides on which order you're going to go through the whiskies. Because Glasgow Distillery have both, so yeah. mostly have unpeated. But I mean, they had one peated, and the Manzanilla has a hint of peat from a distant past. Okay. Um, they thought it was good, and then you told them it was a blended malt. They didn't have any blended malt didn't they have the malt right the malt right oh they did have yeah there's malt I, I right did some but research. i looked at the but, yeah but they did so they did have malt right and a couple of people asked to try it and actually said they liked it um yeah. so no and did and the last thing is did you witness my favorite thing to happen i love it when this happens right. that show it cracks yeah. me up every time so they, they come up and they say i'll try three, the- i had three three marriage proposals on the day by the way i was wearing my ring but, oh oh on. nice i mean i've yeah, never had a marriage proposal not even when you took into the stand, neither of you asked me to marry you. <laughs> next, next, next time, next time Stuart, a hundred percent. And we'll be dressed in we'll be dressed in actual marriage suits. Nice. And uh nice. we'll have a we'll have a band with us. My well, yeah, my last one is is did you witness the they, they come up to you and they say, I'll try the I'll try the such and such. They hold their glass out. Their glass still has whiskey in it. You tell them, Oh, you've still got a bit of whiskey in that. They neck it. <laughs> they rinse it with water, they ditch the water in the spittoon, and then they hand the glass to you. I was So I was furiously um, um, pouring the water to get people to clean their glasses in between drams, which actually doubles your work, but it really matters to me that they get to try the whiskey as it is. And yes, people did come up and ask for whiskey or already have whiskey in their glass a couple of times. The, my favourite one was a gentleman who came over fairly early on, was already uh, totally inebriated, and um, he was with a friend. And the friend um, was really trying the whiskey and sort of exploring it. And he poured every whiskey that's poured in his glass, he just necked it like a shot. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was like, there's no way he's going to be standing in two hours. And credit to him, he yeah. still was. I have no idea how Excellent. much whiskey he would have drunk at that point because he just necked every single one like a shooter. <laughs> yeah, these are all... It's, it's, I'm, I'm glad... I'm really glad Michael Henry got to visit the Croydon Whiskey Festival. <laughs> oh, we said we weren't going to share that. <laughs> well, um, whiskey, whiskey festivals are... Vanilla. Uh, they're Done. always... Um, 
it's it's crazy the thing and these these things always always bring up so many chances to like as you say like as soon as it comes up he's like yeah there's loads of great five-year-olds or there's loads of great whatever you know four-year-olds mm. um i sound like i'm throwing shade i'm, I'm not at all it, it's this is all part of the festival experience and it's i always find it interesting when when somebody kind of newly gets behind the stand um, like so my first time behind the stand i was like what what is going on it's, it's nuts i, I mean yeah. I, I would definitely do it again location and um, family commitments depending um i wouldn't do it all the time but i'd moonlight occasionally i think it's really interesting and i think also it was um it was really interesting talking to people who were sort of getting into whiskey or kind of like whiskey there was lots of people who traveled from places like plymouth and other places to come to the festival and there'd be like friends yeah. who who meet up and go to festivals together so from that side of it, it was really and actually a lot of people made time to actually stop and talk nice. you know um and just have a chat which is lovely so Mostly people that's, were really friendly. That's off to Croydon, to be fair. That's, that's a great festival. Yeah, they're doing the good things. Yeah, about, great festival. About Croydon, so I'm get clear if it works. Well, not so about us. Croydon in general, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the festival. Yeah, not Croydon. Fucking yeah. hell. Bit dicey, a bit dicey from the train station to the festival. <laughs> stay, yeah. stay in the art centre. Uh, Claire, Claire Vulkins, who, who works with us a little bit, she's, she was there last yeah, year and, and she, she was there, she was there this year. year. And she was, last year she was talking about how great it is. Um, and actually... The, the that festival Richard bingo, Foster obviously organizes it. Yeah, that festival bingo actually kind of kind of proves that really because like there's so few of those questions getting asked, so people are coming at it super open open minded, which is which is great. That's that's like the best thing is when people come super open minded and they're like, just let me try some good booze. Um, Honestly, yeah. there was there was one person, and I think it was actually being recorded at the time, and they were trying either the triple distilled and the fruity and sweet. And they didn't drink too much whiskey, and their mouth was genuinely on the floor. <laughs> I was looking over, going, "What is going on?" He was having some sort of yeah. transcendent experience, <laughs> and obviously, for a lot of people, they just want the whiskey to be smooth, yeah. flavoursome, easy to drink. And people who obviously hadn't tried that quality of whiskey generally dumbfounded about how um, you know how smooth and tasty it was. Yeah, well, so, I think it's a more accessible festival than Whiskey Live, isn't it? I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there was there was a, got the, that time. It's, it's the same in Kendall. When you go to when you go to a festival in like a local town, or you you get lots of locals as well who've just come for a day out, right? And so mm. they may not be. If there was a beer festival, I'm sure they go to that, or a wine festival. You know, they like booze. They'll give it a go. So you had a mix between really hardcore whiskey fans and lots of general kind of locals and friends who just kind of dabble. Or sometimes there was a friend who was mega into whiskey with a friend who didn't know too much, but was like just enjoying a day out. It was good. Yeah. But what I didn't say was what's up my ass, and that's that like I've I've completely written off the hairdresser, my hairdresser now. The last two times he's cut my hair and made it look like some sort of like, I mean, for want of a better word, I mean, he made it look as close to pubic hair as he possibly could. It just looks horrendous around the back. What I will say, Duncan, I don't know London how he's managed it. Isn't known for lower end quality in barbers. So he's how a barber, not a hairdresser. For, how much are you paying for a haircut? Too much, I got to say, because more than a pound would be too much. I think it was like eighteen quid, which is way too much for the quality oh. of hair he's cutting like and the thing is is I've, I've i've tried and this time i really had a go and in the past he used to cut hair better you think of anything he should get better at cutting your hair when you more you Can't go to asked. him but it, actually he's got worse he's gone the other direction maybe he's so, got he doesn't hair. need to keep you he's got he's, yeah yeah and do you know i always have a rant about dog poo and the other day i went out and someone had let their dog poo in front of like our driveway like and it was some huge, huge. It must have been a horse-sized dog. Could have been a human. And it was just everywhere. <laughs> Here's the thing, Mike. I went out with I went out with Leo. We went down to the shops, and I got um. It was like the market on that day, and I got a couple um some like giggly pig, like sausage butties. So I was coming back with those. Leo's done two poos. I had three poo bags. And I said to myself because people could walk through it. I feel a bit bad. Lots of kids walk down that road. I was like, oh my god, am I going to do this? I've got the dog. I've got sausage butties in the bag. Oh, no. I was like, I am. Pick I've got a spare poo bag. I'm going to pick it up. But I knew it was going to happen. It's like with other dogs' poo, especially big dogs, it makes me wretch. So I'm there like ooh, 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 trying to pick it up. And I was just thinking of, do you remember that woman that time that walked past when I was carrying the bin out of the front lawn? Yes. And she looked at me like, why are you doing that? I'm like, why am I doing this? Because obviously someone's chucked it onto a front lawn, you div. Yeah. And I was just waiting for her to walk past and look at me like, why why are you picking up that dog poo? Brand. That's, that's clearly not, not from your, your tiny poo. dog. Same size from, as your dog. That's from a giant human or a horse. <laughs> so <laughs> I retched my way to the bin, which was in its correct position, and then back inside the house <laughs> to wash my hands forensically 
<laughs> I mean, whoever did that, I just love to catch them doing it. It really winds me up. Anyway, That's so good. We've got a listener story, Gordon from Two. Yeah. This is the third time oh. Gordon's written in now. He's fo- he's followed us on um, social media. Has he? Yeah, yeah. He says, "I jumped the gun seeing your posts and enthusiastically followed your recommendations for a Glasgow Distillery, the Manzanilla Matured Whiskey." And I have to agree, it's delightful. In your tweet, you referred to it um, as being plum forward. And much to my wife's horror, you were entirely right. Within 30 minutes of sampling this nectar, I suffered a bathroom zipper incident. (laughs) I assume I was distracted by the layers of flavour and depth. Without being overly graphic, the fruit was no longer fresh. My fiancé freed me from my painful plum dilemma and eye contact has not been the same since. Please be careful with your recommendations. They can be as life-changing as they are delectable. Uh, he's having a rough time of it of late. He is. You just wonder what else can happen to this man. I Gordon, mean, we're sorry. We're, we're trying our best. How's the next remember, brace? Always take our tasting notes with caution. Yeah. Stay maybe safe just, out there. Maybe just ease off. He's getting on the new stuff very quickly, isn't he? That's the problem, I think. This is the, just, he's buying too much. He's zipping too quickly. It's a matter of time before you caught something in that zip. He's zipping too quickly. <laughs> he's, he's zipping too quickly. He's zipping too quickly. That's the problem. <laughs> Yeah, that's a he needs to just he needs to hunker down and take his time. So, Stuart. Yeah. Um Pudding Island Drams. Should we start with that today? Yeah, let's do it. So, Stuart, we've got to set the scene. You are going to a desert island, a desert island. It could be cold, it could be hot, it could be anywhere. And you're gonna be there for 30 days. So we'd love to know how you picture the island. And then whilst you're there for 30 days, you can have one whiskey. Kind of, we kind of think of it as unlimited. Um, one pudding or dessert if you're posh. And you can have uh, one album or compilation or whatever to listen to for the period of time. And then it's who's going to pick you up at the end of the 30 days should you survive. Stuart, where would you like to start? Um, so I think, I think my, my desert island would be a classic. It has to be a classic. Like beachy desert island. I'm, I'm thinking. Yes. I'm thinking the island on Castaway. That that kind of thing. Like with my own. Well, so so as as Ian explained re- recently on pod, Glen Elgin, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically, Elgin. Yeah, uh, El- Elgin. I mean, <laughs> tropical to, tropical space island. Yeah. To be fair, I, I lived up that neck of the woods for a few years, and and the weather. I lived in Fintorn. Um, so actually, yeah, Fintorn I'd be cool with. Fintorn would work. That, that kind of weather is nice. Mm. It's beachy. It's... So you're in the middle of the ocean somewhere. You're on a beach, beach island, yeah. like Castaway, that TV show on Channel Four years ago. Did you watch it? I, I don't think I did, but I get the I get the premise. Mm. I watched the Bear Grylls TV show where he casts people away. I think that was slightly <laughs> different. What the one, yeah. the one where he gets naughty with a sea urchin? That guy's filthy. <laughs> <laughs> that show, I love that show, but I, I'm never convinced how real any of it actually was. With he stays in hotels. No, in oh, not even that. He's he's literally yeah. at a five star all inclusive, just at the pool, going, oh, "I'm on a cliff." Ooh. You come, you come on. We'll give you free whiskey, and you can dispel the rumours that we have currently started yeah. about you staying in hotels yeah. in between. <laughs> you're welcome, Bear. Bear. <laughs> so you're on a desert island. My pudding, my dessert would be banoffee pie. Ooh. Oh, a yeah, classic. I think yeah. a classic it had to be. That's 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 one of those desserts that you don't often see it on a menu. But whenever I do, I cannot pass it off. I love that stuff. My mum used to make it when I was younger. If it's done well, it's yeah. fantastic. My mum used to make it when I was younger, and and it was just it's just got that kind of memory. It doesn't have to be my mum's banoffee pie. Her banoffee pie is great. Um, but like I'm I'm happy with other <laughs> banoffee pies are available. <laughs> Others are available. Others are better. available. <laughs> she's only she's only birthed yeah. you and then brought you up to her. Spent eighteen years nurturing you. But it's yeah, not her fault. She didn't have time listen, to make a decent <laughs> recipe. Uh, yeah, look, you'll eat it. You'll eat it if nothing yeah, else exactly. is available, right? Uh, yeah. At a push. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she, she, uh, she. To be fair, in many ways, she's kind of washed her hands of me. My, my wife asked if she could return me, and my mum's response was that the twenty-eight days are over. The the return period is done. Uh, <laughs> she's stuck for me. outside. Outside yeah, of exactly. the period, yeah. No returns. No returns allowed. Yeah. So banoffee yeah, pie is your favourite yeah, pudding then? Shadow. Would you have it with ice cream? What are you going to do? Uh, whipped cream? Cream and ice cream. It's got to be a bit. It's, oh. it's got to be squishy cream. Oh. It can't be. It can't be like good quality whipped cream. It's got to be the the squishy stuff, or as I suspect you guys probably call it squirty cream. Not from today's show. Yeah, yeah, I now call it squishy because it goes squish. Goes squishy. So it goes squish. 
<laughs> so is, is our, our, our many things Fucking in Scotland amazing. is named oh, after yeah. the sound that they in make. In Scotland, we like to keep things simple. Yeah. So we're like, you know, we, we just, we just yeah. go with That's the sound. I can't think of anything else right now, but yeah. Squishy cream. Um, okay, so squishy cream, yeah. ice cream, banoffee pie. And along with it, and I think this would be a, I think this would be a really good pairing, and it's suitable for, for an island dram. It would be Kilhoman Sanic. Yes! That's a yes, Jeff, drama yes. I love. Kil- Kilhoman actually was the distillery that, that properly got me into peat. Um, it was a girl I used to work with, Leah, worked with her at Tomatin. She had previously worked at Kilhoman, um, and she gave me like a half bottle of Kilhoman Loch Gorm, and that was my kind of first experience of big peat, big sherry combined, and, and that's kind of what really got me into right. to nice. heavy peat. Nice, nice. So, I pretty much always have a bottle of of Kilhoman and Sanic, uh on the on the shelf at home, or the, the one that, that, that and just to shoehorn a little bit of brand in there. And um, the our Castro Camus or Castro Camus Twelve is not right. a million miles away flavor wise. Oh really? Yeah, definitely. If you if you like Kilhoman Sanic, it's definitely worth a try. Um, so that was that was my least favorite Mossburn, and I'm really? also not a Kilhoman fan, so it definitely um, is not. Yeah. yeah. Whereas I really like Similar. I like I like the Tour of Vague stuff like um so. Yeah. And I loved the Mossburn rum cask, the four square one. Honestly, one of the whiskeys of two thousand and twenty three, stunning, right? Such um, a good drum. But I know my I know my flavour. I've tried. I've like I keep punishing myself with Kilhoma. I've tried like so many of them, and it's just not my vibe. <laughs> like, well, I, I think don't know why. One day it'll click. Um, and to be fair, other peated whiskey is available, so I don't see why I should keep putting myself for it. Yes, it it's is. Not, it's, it's not. It's un- not. It's because I feel like fan. I should like it. See, I'm not a big fan of red wine casks, and I continue to punish myself with them, <sighs> as you say, because not like, a red wine pervert. Yeah, I'm like I am a massive red wine, wine cask pervert. pervert. Yeah, see, red wine see cask like pervert, they just yeah. I often find them a bit too like sour and they make me do that kind of sour sweetie face. They, and if like the one in ten that tastes incredible, yeah. it's not worth the other nine in ten. See, I where you're like mm. I drink. It's like every now and then one comes out trumps. That's my view on it. And one in one of them is just magic, but the other nine are like meh. See, like the the, the stuff that I'm not keen on is like what makes me try it more. I'm like, I want to try more. But like, think think about the Rioja one from Glen Murray. If you tried that, oh, it is incredible. I don't think I have. So that's my point: is that one in ten can come out absolutely yeah. incredible. Yeah. Like, can be like top top brass, but just some of the others for me just don't quite hit the mark. Whereas Mike's obsessed with the mighty Mike. I'm like one in ten is rubbish. The rest are gold. Yeah. See, I'm, and I just <laughs> I, I just keep it. trying stuff. But I'm like, okay, if there's a category that I don't like, that's what I want to try. It's like if I have a choice between right. between yeah. a red wine cask and and something that I love. Be like, I'm gonna try the red wine cask yeah. first because I want to see if I can find one that like. Um, and then you'll get hit. You'll get hit by a bus, yeah. like, uh, and you'll be like, and as you're lying in the road, yeah. you'll be like, why didn't I just drink more whiskey that I yeah. like? Yeah. Why can't I drink all those red wine casks? <laughs> uh, to be fair, I drink plenty of whiskey that I do like. That's there's there's no there's no um, shortage of there's no shortage of that. So that's so your your choice for whiskey is going to be Kilhoman and uh, Snake, yep. right? Um, even with the peanut you note and the um, the farmhouse uh, whiffs coming off it. I'm a bit of farmhouse. Um, I'm a bit of an agricultural note. Somebody once picked picked that apart. I jokingly said that it tastes like drinking manure, and obviously I didn't mean it literally tastes like drinking manure. And someone's like, it doesn't taste like oh, drinking yeah. manure. I was like, well, obviously it doesn't. But I mean, it's a podcast. What we're we supposed to say? Yeah. It, see, I've heard, I've heard this before. We're tasting notes, and people are like, yeah, but how do you know what that tastes like? How do you know what like how do you know what manure tastes like? What or manure? how do you know what ca- cat's piss tastes oh. like. It's like you don't know what it tastes like but you've yeah. smelt it and it's a strong enough smell that from the smell you know what it tastes like it's like duncan can now say i know what that giant dog poo yeah, tastes exactly. like because i smelt it threw up and it's funny you say that but when you get close enough to things like that like uh they are they they are in the air oh, yeah. so you do actually get yeah, some of it in your mouth right it's like <clears throat> that's why the worst it's like is a if fart you go, into, you go into like a public bathroom and someone's just done a massive dump it's like in your mouth yeah. It's like close yeah. your mouth, seal your eyes, seal your nose. You're literally eating what they've just done. It's then disgusting. you pass out in the urinal and then you're just like, ah, it's a disaster, Duncan. Don't give that advice. So Gordon from Tootin is going to, next week, what's going to happen to him if he listens to that? You only went, you only went into that public urinal for a sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All you're asking for was it to, to smell okay. So what's the third What's the third one? The third one is... Album. album so, so, what so album, album I, yeah album it has to be a playlist so it's 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 going to be my country playlist i'm i'm yes. not I can't, I, i'm not one of those people who's like listening to albums again and again i'm not that albums have never done that for me in that way and my my musical tastes are also all over the shop so you you scroll through my apple music there's there's country there's edm there's there's hip-hop 
There's all different types of EDM and all different types. There's the eclectic. Yeah, it's super eclectic. So, what what kind of playlist do you mean then? Country and western. Yeah, well, it's so more like more like kind of contemporary country. So, I actually went through contemporary country. Do contemporary... talk us through the subcategories of country music. Yes, I will well, be so you fascinated. Have, you have you have country and western, obviously, which is. Right. Which is your 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 Dolly Parton, your Johnny Cash, your oh, that's like oh, your line dancing, that's yeah, your line dancing. yeah, all those kind of yeah. trad country kind of playlists or playlists or artists. Yeah. But then, and I'm trying to find. So, so last night I, I I went I went all to Apple Music and where are the Dixie Chicks? What category are they? I mean, country and western. I think they're probably country 100%. and western. Yeah, they're a little bit more trad than than some of the more modern stuff. If that makes sense. Um, does that mean it's traditional yes that means trad, traditional yeah. trad yeah yes. that's not, uh, sorry, it's, just, not, it's not a slur i thought that if you that's not that's not a tiktok slur that just means traditional um <laughs> yeah see i now can't find the i now can't find the playlist there's like a heavy rotation playlist on uh, apple music and i went through and like every other song was was a was a country song most of them were luke combs and um, so Luke Combs has been chris stapleton yeah see i quite like chris stapleton i'm not a big fan of tennessee whiskey see it sounds the, the song Tennessee Whiskey to me sounds like the the M and S ad. It sounds like they've tried to make a country version of the M and S ad. This okay. isn't just country. This it's is M and S country. Um, is it Walrus by Fleetwood Mac? Yeah, a little bit. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah. Has someone covered Walrus by Fleetwood Mac in country? Is that what you're saying? That shouldn't be allowed. That that is the accusation that Stuart is putting out there. <laughs> right, lawyers. Take up pens. Um, so yeah, look, look, Holmes <laughs> has been featured heavily in my my uh, recent listening. Beyonce's new song has been featured very heavily. Her Texas Hold'em song, um, which is kind of Beyonce goes country, okay. which oh, I love. So that's like contemporary yeah. country, Beyonce. Well, yeah, I mean Beyonce's was Jay Z. Has Jay Z has Jay Z nudged into country not, yet? Because then, yeah, I am keen to hear Jay Z doing a bit of country. I'd like to hear Jay Z rapping about <laughs> his, his pickup truck and his Doug and and you know his, his yeah. broken guitar or something. I think that'd be pretty cool. I can I can recommend having a dive into some Kevin Fowler. Um, he's Kevin got a great Fowler, okay. track, "Don't Touch My Willy," um, and it's making reference to uh, his partner not touching his Willie Nelson collection. Ah, Nothing else. Right. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. No, okay. Yeah, you did actually keep recommending that to me. Now I understand why. Um, so, who's going to pick you up from this um, desert island? Then, so so you've got let's so far. You've got um, you can have banoffee pie with all the works yep. with, um, scooshy, with scooshy cream, scooshy cream, scooshy your ice cream. cream, all your types of cream. You're having uh, Kilhome and Snake. You're listening to contemporary, not trad, country music. Some playlist <laughs> that may or may not include Beyonce. Hopeful that Jay Z is going to rock up at some point. And who's going to pick you up? Yeah, see, I really struggled with this one. I'm like. Do it I could want... be anyone in the world, Stuart. Anyone. Well, no, that's the thing. I'm like, do I want a famous? Do I want like someone I know? Like, do you know? I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm... we both went famous, didn't we, Mike? We went famous. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I personally, anyone that's saying their wife is a sellout. So, yeah. th- there's been a few sellouts. I'm unless like, no. your unless your wife is mega famous. Unless they li- or unless they're listening. Yeah. Which she, realistically, yeah, if your wife is if your wife is Charlie's Theron, fair enough. Say yeah, Charlie's Theron. <laughs> my wife is not Charlie's Theron. She's she's not currently listening, although. I mean, she might listen to it. I don't know. It depends. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to pin her down <laughs> to listen to it. But see, it's, I was going to think of Tom Cruise because I quite like the idea of having him stuck on a boat, and I could. I like that. I could grill him. I about, like that. That would be super intense. Yeah. You wouldn't grill him. He would grill you. He would just give you. It'd be the longest motivational speech of your life. I think, and and he would get. gun it. Like he wouldn't be hanging about in that yeah. boat. Top gun it. He would. Hey. Yeah. Hey. He'd be <laughs> he'd be wide open throttle. He'd be like tearing the ass off. Yeah. Oh yeah, that would. Be... So he's going to take you back on a speedboat or something. Oh I... yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be. There's no way. Could have been, 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 been a Chinook. Could have been a Chinook. Could have been, been a helicopter. Or, or maybe he rocks up in a. Want. Maybe he rocks up in a fighter jet. Yes, um, a Harrier, a Harrier jump jet. Yeah, and he literally hovers over the island. Chucks Arnie a rope Schwarzenegger out. style. Yeah. yeah that what was, was that great. film when they were trying to fly the? What was that film when they were trying to fly the Harrier jump jet? It was all over the shop. Yeah. Um, oh, that's a classic. Oh, I'll find was that, it. That's oh, such was a strong that true scene. Lies? Yes. Yes. It was. Well done, Stuart. Yes. Yes. And he's like wobbling all over the place with it as he's trying to take off. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's pretty... nice. Thanks so much for taking us through your pudding island rams. Yeah. 
I think it would be nice now to um, hear a bit about the new whiskies uh, or the new whiskey from Tour of Ake. Uh, give us a bit of a rundown. Mike and I have also done our tasting notes. So, yeah, take us through it, Stuart. What's um, what are the what are the changes? What's new that's come out? So I'm gonna I'm gonna start. So you guys have got a dram of, of two of our whiskies. You've got a dram of Alt Glow, um, which is the one that has been about for a couple of years. Can I check the pronunciation? Because we are bastardizing every whiskey in the world. Alt Alt Glown rhymes with clown. clown, like clown with a yeah, G. Clown with a G. Or clown, yeah, like a gangster clown. Not glean. Not glean. Or clown. I, I have heard okay. glen. I've heard <laughs> glan. Both of which are, are cool, but. Glean, it's definitely not Glean. Um, Alt Glan, Alt Glen, Alt Glown. Um, Glown. Yeah, this is. Glown, okay. quiet. Yeah, so uh, which is. Um, so it's named after one of our two water sources. Um, Alt Glown means the valley burn. So a lot of thought went into the name of that burn when somebody named it. Um, so it's a burn that runs through a valley. They called it the valley burn. Um, so it's. Okay. They could have called it Wales. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so Alt Glown has been around for a couple of years. Um, it is the second whiskey in our legacy series. So what we talk about is is our journey. Um, that's that's what we're we're what we're on. That's what we're doing. Um, this is our journey to ten year old. So this second whiskey, the Alt Glown, fully matured in ex bourbon, mostly first fill, around roughly twenty to thirty percent refill. Um, heavy peated. Okay. But it brings a, it's a different side of heavy peat. It's heavy peat, but not what people expect. How did you find it, Mike? We both did tasting notes on Sunday um, ahead of the pod. And the reason for that is because it makes it um, well, it just makes it <laughs> a, a bit easier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I get that. <laughs> easy on the edit, right? So, um, but um, I've got some. I might pour some in a bit, but just to enjoy rather than to so analyze. I've got it here, and I'm just diving back to my tasting notes. So, nose. I've said that the smoke is like a dry floral smoke sort of comes throughout so miles away from sort of like Lafroig world not tcp there's hints of it but not a lot it's it's definitely a more of a like heatherish smoke if that makes sense um i've said super fruity it actually smells like lager shandy with traditional lemonade i've got round trees fruit gums i also got weirdly potato water like the starchy water after you cook oh, spuds. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah got a bit of that in there and then it went to lager and lime and this is all just on the nose. So really fruity, summery, sort of like smoky, obviously. But what I love about this is we, so we, I know we have both done this and not looked at all about what it says online. So yours are yeah. completely different to mine. Do you want to hear my nose on that? Go on. Honestly, I'm laughing listening to what you said. It makes me wonder if, I, if I'm right <laughs> in the head. I, I tried it and Maria and I both nosed it and she contributed a little bit to this, but I put like seaweed, acetone, sea salt, brine, smoked paprika, mussels, damp wood, a little fruity. That's what, that was my notes. We're talking about the all clown, right? Yep. Yep. That's what I put down. <laughs> no idea. I don't know. To me, that is so fruity. Yeah, but it's I got think, fruit in it. Again, but I think because of the, the whole, like I said to you last time, that I'm so used to now the peat element, I am not picking up as much that smoke. It's kind of like my whole nose is sort of getting past that because it likes it it knows what it is it can get immediately jump past the peat sort of right elements. okay well look, look, so I'll... i'm getting like the base under You're... all the sort of seaside -y stuff and it's just fruit bomb to me with i'm gonna smoke. get you i'm gonna make you a t-shirt that says you have transcended peat <laughs> <laughs> you're on a different level okay well, good for me, you. Like, like a yoga pose and then um palette wise i got smoked caramel baked lemon um i.e. sort of lemon that's been cooked with the sourness reduced, rich tea biscuits, yellow pear, seared steak, and then those white old school candy sticks you used to get as a kid, fake cigarette things. Oh, that's a great right. tasting. I'm going to pour a little bit more now because... I love that as a tasting. Yeah. yeah I, I'm just pouring a tiny bit to sniff now because I I, I didn't have it down as free as I. I put on the on the palate brine, olive, smoked fish, new make, citrus, um, like lemon citrus, Salty and oaky, going through to a finish of kind of smoked fish, cheese, smoked fish or smoked cheese. You know that Austrian smoked cheese. Smoked fish cheese. <laughs> you know that Austrian cheese, that little, the little sausage shaped ones yeah. you get. Quite a lot of brine, still fruity, but mostly on the citrus side of things. That's what I kind of had it down as. So I'm interesting to to hear you put like all those other things into it. Yeah, I mean those are those. those yeah. I mean we we talk about it being being fruity, being a little bit creamy on the nose. Um, we talk about that that ashy bonfire smoke. So. We we never wanted to produce a whiskey that was searingly medicinal. That was that was a, a 
very much something mm. that we wanted to avoid doing. We describe our style as elegantly rugged, and so this this beautiful, light, <laughs> yeah. delicate spirit, but big P. So lo- lots of peatiness. So this is 77 ppm in grain. So it's more heavily peated than, yeah. than lots of whiskies that we would all consider heavily peated. And But it doesn't taste the way everybody expects. It's not TCP, it's not sticking plasters, it's not not tar, it's not burning tires, it's not, it's none of that. And I'm not knocking any of them. At- and you've got, um, you've got residual yeah. phenols as well. So we are um, PPM. Really like that. Yeah, where you get what, what it is yeah, afterwards. Yeah, we get fine. super nerdy yeah. about, about this. And like, well, so we, we put the residual phenols on there, which are 17 in, in the case of the old blind. Um, but when, when we do tastings, we actually dial down into that and we, we drill down into how that breaks down between the cresols and the guayacols. Um, so that's that's where we get super duper nerdy. So um, broadly speaking, cresols are giving you medicinal, they're giving you tar, they're giving you TCP. Glycols are giving you ashy bonfire smoke, gunflint fireworks. And what we end up with is phenols that are really well balanced. So uh, the, the glycols, the cresols and the phenols, which are, phenols are a part of the phenol family, which is slightly confusing to me, but, but yeah. they are. Um, and so the, the, the cresols and the guayacols are, are almost in balance. The guayacols actually slightly um, exceed the yeah. cresols. So that's how we get that, that bonfire smoke, which is, which is really very much our signature, that, that style. Um, and this, is, this represents our house style, which I think is one of the things which is really interesting about our whiskey. And it's, it's key about our whiskey is our house style. So that's going to be evident through, throughout all of our whiskey. So when we come to taste the other one that you guys have got, mm. um, you're, you'll notice that the, that the, that flavor is there that you can taste you, essentially the old glown in, in the new one. You can, and that's a great transition, I think, to, to move on to, to the new one, which you kindly provided yeah. us with a sample of as well. Um, so what's the new one called, Stuart? Um, I think I I think I'm going to ask you guys to to have a bash. <laughs> at this. Hang on, I'd have to see if I've got it on the table. I went knock the moin. Yeah, it's definitely knock okay. nah. Yeah, knock the moin. Yeah. Okay, so it's croch. croch. What? What? What the hell? If it's like anok, <laughs> so if it's like, like anok, it's like anok. Croc. And so, so you're saying so, this isn't this isn't like anok. This is just this is what did you say? Croch. 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 So yeah, croch the moin. Yeah, in Welsh. Is it even the moin? Hang on, it, well, Stuart's just, Stuart's just written a piece. It's, it's actually croc hasamana mananine. Is that right? Croc pneumonia. <laughs> so we say croc pneumonia. Croc, now, so croc this, this pneumonia. is one of the things about Gaelic. Wow. This is one of the things about Gaelic. Um, I, it's one of the things about, about every every language, really. Croc um, We We touched on this earlier with, with what we call squishy cream and you guys incorrectly call squirty cream. I can pronounce um, squishy, that's, Stuart. That's an accusation. You know, uh, squishy we can do. <laughs> Scushy is definitely yeah. my new go-to. Yeah, I'm going but to be all tomorrow. Is, so, so with with Gaelic, uh, it's much more noticeable and pronounced. I think the differences. So, the difference between Gaelic that is being spoken in the south of Sky, where we are, and this north of Sky, can be pretty massive. Um, so, actually, some people would pronounce it Canoch, some people would pronounce it just Knock, right? Um, and some people would pronounce it Croch. So, what you're saying is, um, even you guys can't decide. Right, so it's a free for all. Just say how you want, people. That's what that's, yeah. that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> there are. I mean, I was I was on Sky all week last week. Coming back, I stopped off at the Misty Bottle Shop. Um, big shout out to Misty Bottle Shop on Sky. If you go to Sky, pop in to see Alistair. No, not paid for that plug, but I thought I would bung it in. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. Alistair is a skiener, born and bred, and we were chatting to some Americans, and he pronounced it more like you guys said, Knocknamoin. We are saying Crocknamonia. So, croc pneumonia. So, so, okay. so for us, it's croc pneumonia. But yeah. uh, have you have you seen Duncan recently? No, he's at the croc. He's got pneumonia. <laughs> he's off. <laughs> croc pneumonia. In the marketing product, mean did no one say if we call it that, people could say it's a croc <laughs> No one say that. Yeah. I don't think that occurred to anybody. Uh, it will now. This, this... Luckily, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. But it's, it's decent. But I mean, just saying. That sometimes when you pick a name, you have to think about. Yeah. You know what, what, what people. You know the review, the inevitable review on yeah. on other websites. Yeah, no, I to, I know exactly what you mean. It's, I mean, I, I'm someone who has to go through my life with the surname Dick, so 
you know, I, I understand how names yeah. can be <laughs> how names can be misused. <laughs> yeah, some very cool people are called um, Dick throughout the years. So I think like you know, David Dickinson, close <laughs> David Legend. Dickinson. Yeah, can I have to compliment you on your tan today, Stuart? And there's another one on your shelf there. <laughs> hey! I just noticed David Dickinson. The David Dickinson. Piers, tan. Piers Morgan, David Dickinson. <laughs> So, uh, um, <laughs> back to the whiskey. What did you think of this one then? Um, so this is this is this is legacy legacy series chapter three. So as I said, this is this is our journey okay. to ten. Um, so this is in fact you've got to be nearly there, uh, right? Twenty twenty eight. Oh, what six years? Twenty twenty eight. We'll release our ten year old. Yeah, I was going to say another four years yes, to go. Six not, years old. Oh, really? Five years to go. Yeah. Even I know that. Twenty seventeen. Yeah. We started. <laughs> in fact. You literally, fact, have, Mike, you've Mike, you held through. up a bottle that said 2017 on it in giant... Yeah, but do you know what? Because I've seen 2017, I've gone, well, it's got to be at least three years old. Oh, right. But obviously it was released... Yeah, that, that came out in 2021. Yeah, that was, 2020. That's the inaugural, yeah. isn't it? That's the inaugural. Yeah. yeah. So released in 2020, not yeah. 17. Yeah. So that's why. Um, My bad. So, so this actually, as we are speaking, um, is not had its global release yet. This gets its global release uh, on Thursday this week. It was it was released okay. in the UK right. last week, um, but this is out. So this is out now, depending on on where you are and when you're listening and, and what have you. Yeah. And this, I know Callum's already got two bottles of it, so it must it must. Oh be. yeah, Callum Callum was all over it instantly. <laughs> yeah, of course he was. Um... <laughs> <laughs> He's a big fan. Callum and Kate are big fans oh. of uh, Tora Vega. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I I found this yeah. one um, quite quite different. So uh, looking at the bottle, it says it's got um, ex bourbon American oak, um, Oloroso, and PX. And yeah. I could definitely get the DNA from the other, from the, um, from the all clown. I found it more refined, which actually I think is a good thing. So I found yeah. generally, I found it more refined. Um, I did put down, obviously it felt like the peat was slightly more medicinal, but not massively so. And then I thought I got like white chocolate as well as like milk or chocolate, you know, those milk or chocolate bars, you know, like the really yeah. milky ones you get in Europe with the purple wrappers like that. Yeah. Now I've still put down brine. The smoked fish for me had been dialed right back. It was like much more distant. Um, lime yeah. and salt. You know when you have like a beer and you like you put a lime yeah, yeah, on the top yeah. and it's like dipped in salt and you get that kind of lime and salt yeah. together. And then still a damp wood and I felt like there's a little bit of like sort of rubber wellies in there, but I like that. And it was like very minor. That's what I put down. That was my initial kind of thoughts on it. And mm. I like the chocolate note with the say I like sweet and savory. That's kind of a good mix. So I, I yeah, liked it. Yeah. I like the nose. What did you what did it you was- guys get? So I went, it was kind of sort of similar, as you said, smoke, um, definitely more of the TCP element on there. But um, yeah. I kind of got more of a pine, sort of oh, a right. pine tree smoke, was weirdly. Um, and then nose-wise, custard undertones, plum or hoisin sauce, honeycomb, hoisin milk sauce. chocolate, nice. yeah, eucalyptus. And then there was like a nearly a menthol note running through it as well, um, right at the back. And then palette-wise... I said wider palette, obviously due to the mix of barrels, um, smoked toffee, blueberry muffins, good amount of oak, latte, Terry's chocolate orange, ginger finish with lemon zest, and then real sort of finishing notes, Scottish oat cake and high percentage dark chocolate. Right. Good chocolate. It's interesting that you both picked up on the slightly more medicinal. Um, yeah. So this, where the alt glown had ever so slightly more guayacols than pre-sols, this is ever so slightly more pre than guayacols so that's i mean we're talking like one ppm either way so it's a really you do small you do realize we are absolutely going to have to make a garage rap track with guayasols and uh what were the yes. other ones you said in it pre pre guayacols and pre-sols guayacols and pre-sols and this is the are this is right up kanye street here like you're in, <laughs> you're in kanye territory my soul your soul guayacol pre-sol exactly <laughs> <laughs> can i ask as well on the bottles yeah you've got the yeast strains yeah, I really had a good couple of hours getting nerdy on this and okay. like just having a Google of to all the things making a massive impact. And you like again, you've got the Pinnacle, and then you've got Pinnacle MG Plus. Yeah, is that the same? They've just dropped the MG Plus off, or was there a difference? Do you know? I don't know. Fair enough. I'll edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeasts. Part of the reason for the changes in yeast is that some of this liquid is going to be from our earliest distillations. Um, way back in 2017 and at that point we were we were trying to dial in exactly what we were using and what yeast we were going to use um mm. so that's that's going to be part of the reason why there's some chopping and changing we, we spent nine months in r&d to to dial in the whiskey so changing one thing at yeah. a time 
Um, so changing the yeast, change it back, change the ferment fermentation temperature, change it back, etc., etc. Um, so that's one of the reasons why there will be that that little bit of change. Um, nowadays, yeah. everything is done using a yeast called Distillamax, um, which is what was I think called Anchor. I'm pretty sure what was Anchor yeah. is now called Distillamax. Um, so everything now uses that yeast. Apart from if we're doing any kind of special or any weird and wonderful stuff. Um, wow. Yeah. So that's that's one of the reasons. So I was looking like getting like the Pinnacle NG, the stats and stuff. Like I couldn't believe how much of a difference it made in pulling off um, alcohol volumes in fermentation and things. So it was able to, if you're on a higher gravity still, you can pull off higher ABVs and things depending on yeast. And it yeah. did comparisons to other yeast. Yeah, it's so much nerdiness you can get into on it i was loving it that's one of the crazy things about fermentation is that up until not that many years ago and when i say not that many years ago probably like 10 15 years ago uh yeah. ferment fermentation was really just the bit where we make the alcohol and it was it was very much just we'll we'll chuck in the wort um we'll <laughs> chuck in some yeast and then we will have see what we'll happens. have some wash we'll have beer essentially whereas now yeah so many distilleries are messing about with that kind of stuff. I mean, um, Holyrood and, yeah. and Leith are really at the kind of forefront of that kind of thing, of working with those and seeing what flavours it changes. And it's one of the things that the Thompson Brothers are doing as part of the project they're doing with the, the that James Eady book. Um, they're messing mm. around with old yeasts and all this weird and wonderful stuff. Um, it's fascinating. All of these things, there's so many, there's so many different tiny little aspects that you just change a tiny wee thing and and the flavor just completely changes. One of the things I'm interested yeah. speaking of, of, you know, small changes making a big difference. Um, we've got we've got Pedro Jimenez matured, and we've got other also matured liquid in here. Um, so this this whiskey is essentially built on the recipe from Alt Glau. So we started with broadly speaking Alt Glau, that roughly seventy ish percent first fill and twenty to thirty ish percent um, refill bourbon, and then we added some sherry. Some of the roast on some PX matured. I'm going to ask you guys to take a guess on the percentage of of how how much of how much sherry matured. Yeah, I mean, if you want to go into is this much PX, this much other roast. But you said like you said Oloroso and PX, didn't you? Yeah. I feel like yeah. um I feel like the um, the PX is more than the Oloroso in the mix. Okay. I feel like Oloroso is very little, maybe like ten percent or something. PX could be like twenty percent. Okay. Like if it, it still feels like there's quite a lot of um ex bourbon and American oak in it okay because it because it's more like the yeah. sweet note the sweet note is not dominating it's uh like you said like the dna from going from the Auckland to this yeah you can still see all of the outlands um uh dna present it's just got that sweetness that's come through in the sort of chocolate notes and some of the sort of different fruity notes yeah so yeah, i'm gonna go i'm gonna say com combined maybe like 30 percent no okay. more than that that's my vibe i just said I'd have said 30 PX, maybe 10 or so. Oh, you've gone 40 then? Yeah. 8% total. Huh? Oh, wow. Eight. Okay, what? wow. So 6% or so and 2% PX. So it is tiny, eight. Tiny, right. tiny. Tiny. I think... You know, like, I, I got oh, like shit. I got a lot of milk chocolate, brine, coastalness, white pepper, lime, salinity. I get some paprika as well, but I like paprika yeah. on the palate. And I said the finish was kind of long, spicy, it builds a little chilly heat. More savoury, faint chocolate. Some brown sugar sweetness comes through. So, I, yeah, I did actually, you know, looking at it, I put most of the same tasting notes for both whiskies. It's just yeah. that there's that little bit of kind of chocolatey sweetness. And yeah. You've done a good job there to get that chocolatey note in because I think people like that. And yeah. It's not Neil, so easy to get into. Neil, our whiskey Jeez. maker, has done a superb job on this. And that, that 8% total, the 6 and 2, it's amazing how far that little bit of sherry matured liquid has gone. It's lucky you weren't letting us us do it because we would have we would have been going high in numbers. Drowned it. It. I mean, this, I mean the, the, it's one of these things where it, the process of getting there is basically he, ke he keeps adding until it gets too much and then he goes back a step. Mm. And that's broadly speaking, I mean, okay, that's making it sound really rough. And um, it's a little bit, he's, mm. he's very analytical, Neil in his approach to whiskey making. Yeah. But, Do you want to shout Neil out his name in full? Neil? Neil McLeod Matheson. Oh, that's the most Scottish name ever. <laughs> Scotland. So Neil is yeah. Neil is a Matheson from uh, Lewis. His family is from Lewis originally. So one of the things that, that we really quite like is the fact that the distillery, the, the building that the distillery is in, is built from stone that's that came from the ruin of a castle, which is just mm. a couple hundred metres from the distillery, Castle Camus. Uh, that castle was built by the McLeods to defend Slate Peninsula. So 
the, the building is built from a McLeod castle and there is now a McLeod back on slate producing whiskey. Quality. So we like that kind of real circular story that's happened there. It's which decent. Is... Yeah, cool. The dog <laughs> is padding around again. Um, I don't know Obviously. why. He's done like four miles of walking again today and yet he's walking around, which probably means he's about to drink like a pint of water just before he goes to bed. Yeah. Just so he can insist on getting up really early to go out. I think it'd be, I think it'd be good to sort of tra- uh, uh, transition away from this. So if, if um, so what do you say? Is there anything you'd like to say in summary about the whiskeys, Stuart? The really nice, the nice thing about these is, is that they are evolved. That's a, the nice thing is that these whiskeys are nice. <laughs> They're nice. They're nice. They're nice. Stuart Dick, the new whiskeys. Nice. Nice. Yeah, you can, you can tell I drink it with Duncan. You've been having a drive with my dad, haven't you? How would you like to summarize? Uh, it's nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> nice. The the great thing is 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 we're nice. on this journey. The whiskey is going yeah. to be the whiskey is evolving, <laughs> and that's that is the whole point of what we're doing with the legacy series is that we want we want people to come along with us on this journey. They want we want people to experience yeah. it as it evolves. And seeing tasting these two side by side is such a great comparison. Yeah. But yeah, the this journey. Come along with us on the journey, please. Um, join us on the journey. Oh. I'm there, Stuart. I'm there. Excellent. Have you considered getting a bus on the island, which is like a dis- like a like a like a bus for people? A whiskey bus. Yeah, basically, and really you get them idea. on, and then you drive them around a part of the island whilst they try the whiskies that have so far been on the journey. There was an Ardbeg bus, so it kind of would be copying. Nice idea. Does and it, does it matter? If it, you if, could probably buy that if it's copying. Does it matter? See, does it doesn't matter. Uh, if it's Duncan, I I think I I may I may so. I've got various ideas that involve a journey around Sky. Yeah. Like... Could have been your Dragon's Den, Duncan. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Whiskey bus. I need to sort of it now. Sake. I don't see how we're going to make money out of it. It's just a good idea for Stuart and the, uh, and the team. Does that sound good to you? Yeah. Like, imagine you go there, you get on a bus, and then they take around the island, and you talk a bit, some, you know. And as you're doing it, you're trying the whiskey, so you're literally on the journey, going through the journey. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can be there with your microphone, going, you know, like emceeing. Eyes to the left. Eyes That's to the left. Mary's house. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Mary. She's putting her washing out. Yeah. That's class. <laughs> we um, I, I did a so we when we when we host guests at the distillery this is a random tangent when we host guests at the distillery um we um part of their visit is going on a tour of of the island and one of the things that we decided to do this year is that, that we are going to host do that tour ourselves we used to hire a company to do it we're going to do it ourselves it's just going to change it a little bit and we're, we're keen that, that we do it um so i went out on one of the tours um tail end of last year and the, the driver was telling us about the history of this mountain and I wasn't really paying enough attention to gather what the name of the mountain was um, but I knew <laughs> vaguely what the story was so I put it in my notes on my phone as Old Lady Hill because it's something to do with a woman who died so I need to try and figure out what Old Lady Hill is actually called. That's going to be the next legacy <laughs> release next year. Old, Old Lady, Lady Hill. Hill. <laughs> Except it, it'll... In Gaelic. Yeah. Yeah, in Gaelic, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Ladder and Hill of Peat. Oh, so that, that will also be Croch then. So so Croch pneumonia means Big Hill of Peat. Um, so right, so we'll, have, we'll have Croch in there again. Croch of Edna. Yeah, Croch of Edna. <laughs> oh, just, just, to be, just to be fair to you, Stuart, the, the reviewers out there, they don't have to go with Croch of shit. They could go with Croch of Gold. <laughs> Croch of right? Gold, yeah, that, that would be more... I, right. I'd be happier with Croch of Gold. Um, and we, we did just have the yeah. 17th, didn't we? So it would be Lynn sort of tying into um, St Paddy's Day that's yeah. just happened. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We should have really had someone Irish on the pod. Didn't think that through. Yeah, I think we, we're <laughs> yeah, we've got equal we've got, Irish and Scotch. We've got the, the second Scottish person on basically <laughs> one day after St. Patrick's Day. So what becomes of you, my You got your own YouTube channel, haven't you? You want to shout your YouTube? Um, out? So mostly, I'm mostly on TikTok, but I, I am on YouTube. Oh, TikTok! Sorry, um, yeah, with the kids, down, down with, with the kids, kids yeah. or drink absolutely. responsibly. Um, yeah, I'm at Dram Dabbler on on TikTok. Dram, Dram Dabbler, yeah, love it. At Dram me, Dabbler, at Dram Dabbler. So, um, talk to us, Stuart. You're three whiskies behind a bar. So, are you going into a, a pub? What three whiskies would you choose to have behind a bar? 
you know, like when you go to a rubbish pub and you're yeah. like, oh, this pub's, it's got a few beers on, doesn't have an, ex- we're not talking about a quality whiskey pub. You're in the arse end of nowhere. You've gone in somewhere. You go, that, that boozer looks okay. It's got bells. Does it? Go in. What do they have behind the bar to save it? You know, if you're that publican, what do you put behind your um, behind your bar? So, yeah, so my, my three drums would be, I'm going back to the Kilholm and Sanic because I think that is, it ticks. It, yes. I'm walking straight out of the it pub. Ticks, straight out it of the ticks pub. big <laughs> and shit. I'm going next door. Heated. Um, I'm then going with another one of one of my kind of, it was kind of an eye-opening drama, a kind of a bit of a gateway whiskey for me. It was the first whiskey I really kind of loved which was of any caribbean cask nice um, oh i actually the the first editions were really good some people say that it got yeah. worse after that um but i did i used to, I used to, okay. used to be one of the 14 year yeah it yeah. used to be one yeah. of my go-to's at airports yeah. in uh, asia and i got it when it first yeah. came out because it was like pretty much just a travel exclusive and it was banging yeah and then i tried it a couple of years That's later three years game. later and i don't think it was as good so and it's it's gradually crept up in price mm. as well um, it used to be about forty pounds. So, so yeah, that would be that's good though. That would be my that would be my second dram. Um, and dram number three would be. See, I'm debating. I'm I'm mentally debating here. I'm I'm gonna go with Glenalfie fifteen. Okay. That big sherry beast of a dram. So you've got you've got um um sherried peated We've, from sherried peated from Ireland. sherried sherried. Cherry, yeah, <laughs> and and then something a little bit lighter and a bit more gentle with the, the above any Caribbean cask. I noticed there's nothing with just eight yeah. percent sherry in the mix. There, <laughs> 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 you have to wait yeah. for that from Tora Vega, the 100 percent sherry bomb coming out in future. It's something actually, there's not, yeah, there is an interesting point. There's not a lot of that about, there's not a lot of um whiskies with a bit of sherry, most of them are either no sherry no, or yeah. mega sherry, flooded. Or they're finished in sherry, right? You know, like yeah, you know, stick it in there for a bit at the end. Um, nice. And um, what about your whiskey room one hundred and one? So, is there anything that you would condemn uh, in the world of whiskey to room one hundred and one? It's the thing that we we touched on earlier in um, in my my whiskey my whiskey Ooh. festival bingo. It's the it's that whole neck in the whiskey, rinsing this rinsing with water and <laughs> dumping the water. Uh, that's it's, it's got to be that uh, that's i think you know people would what about people spittooning and just like you're just watching people like spit their whiskey out in front of you uh, do you know what i respect that so much <laughs> leaning over about half a foot from you and then just spitting their whiskey out into the spittoon which is which they well, well, maintain I mean, that's, eye contact. That's a special treat when they do that um <laughs> But not. <laughs> I mean, people shouldn't have to drink all of it. It was just funny because, like, people, rather than move the spittoon, people lean right over and then. I, I have the seen so I have seen people cutting about with like a personal spittoon that they then empty every so often. That was pretty gross. That was not nice. <laughs> yeah, I've like, heard a about ja- that. like a Wank. little like a little jam jar. Um, and I'm and I'm like, is that? Oh, bore off. There's not there's not enough fucking time in you life. You want to get you want you want to get one bore which has the off. smallest possible opening on it. So it's incredibly yeah. difficult. To get it. <laughs> but no, I think it's it's <laughs> unless it was like a hidden way of them just like because you're not allowed to take sample bottles into these festivals a lot of them oh, anymore, so yeah. they're quite tight. And go, no, it's my personal spittoon. You're like, oh yeah, just collecting a a blend of spit and whiskey over the oh, course of grimace. the day. <laughs> I once did. Uh, I, I once did a, a, a tour, and I had people on it, and they were they'd been doing a whole bunch of whiskey tours all over Scotland, and they were making up what they were calling their dirty blend. Um, so at the end of the tasting, the four of them um, would dump what was left in each of their drams into this big kilner bottle um to make their their dirty blend their infinity bottle of the drums that they'd all been Love drinking it. Oh, oh we uh, i like that we have to we have to um um we have to uh ask you before uh, jumping off um today um we were originally going to go through and do an episode which included uh whiskey based computer games and so yes. Stuart credits him went away to have a real think about this <laughs> I and, might have stumbled upon a genuine, amazing idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, go on then. What was it you came up with? Because I thought it was a bit of a genius when you told us before the call. So, so, so this is this is copyrighted. If anybody, <laughs> if anybody's interested in Trademarked. licensing this, um, yeah, drop drop me a message on Instagram at Mossburn underscore Stuart, and I'd be be happy to discuss. 
um, distillery manager. So like a knockoff of football manager, F1 manager, all of that, but distillery manager. And I give this way too much thought. I, I, I mean, to be fair, there's so many new so, distilleries coming up. Yeah. But actually, you know, it could be a little bit of a training program for a lot of people, couldn't it? Well, and see, I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking you can, depending on like the difficulty level you go in at. So like if you go on easy mode, you 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 automatically you take over like one of the big well established brands. So easy mode you start yeah. on with Glenlivet or Glenfiddich, established brand. It's just you you're kind of continuing what they're doing. Um, hard I, honestly, mode, Stuart, I just I just transfer in. I'd buy or transfer in whatever the way you do it. Uh, Michael and Marine just put my feet up for a bit. Yeah, like, <laughs> well, so that's, just get him just get him, do that. get him in the team. Just yeah. put my feet up. The transfer. You market. would. You'd have a transfer market. Transfer it, blenders. Transfer yeah. PAs. Yeah. Salespeople. Um, Richard Richard Patterson's broke his leg. He's going on <laughs> offer. It's, it's a massive price reduction. Yeah. You, he's trying to get. He's trying to get. A, he's trying to get a seven year contract. Like we'll give him one year. Yeah. Best, <laughs> one year contract extension. He was walking out of a taste and he slipped on the whiskey. He'd pay thrown to make. Away. Pay to make. <laughs> There's no seven year contracts here now. You're, you're. You go in in hard mode and you're 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 bootstrapping your your distillery like Thompson Brothers. It's you know it's it's out the back of the hotel and you you know you're doing everything totally by hand. Yeah, I just think you've got to decide what shows you're going to, what you're releasing. So like it's like it's just all of Good. these little it's all of the kind of stuff that, that we all have to deal with. So like festivals, perfect. Example. It does sound class. It yeah. would probably be fairly hard to organise, but oh, it I think it like would. It be you could have fun. like you could have mini games in there of just spreadsheet maintenance. Because oh. I know <sighs> Brian would love that. See, I imagine? love that. I, I you'd have to pick yeah. I, my life is run by spreadsheets. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no spreadsheet people. Someone needs to tidy up the yeast spreadsheet. You're like, ah, here we go, mini game. <laughs> Gentlemen, let me hit you with some um, Isle of Sky facts, right? Go on. Um, so I didn't know some of these. So number one, um, uh, there's a fella called Tem Tom Leopard, who is the most tattooed man in the world that lives on the Isle of Sky. He's 99.9 percent .9 covered in tattoos. Oh, did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah. What Duncan didn't tell you is that the tattoos are all of grass and you can't see him. <laughs> no, look him <laughs> up. He's basically, like a full-time ghillie suit. He lives on the Isle of Sky. And how, Tom Leopard. How are we spelling leopard? Um, I guess it's L E P P A R D. It's got to be like Def oh. Leopard. I think he might change his name leopard. by Depot. So he probably has like yeah. the tattoos as well. Um, okay, next one. Ian Fleming created the Bond, created Bond there. That's where he conceptualized James Bond on the Isle of Sky. Wow. Right? Didn't know that. Oh. Look at Didn't this. Look that. at this. What else have we got? Um, apparently, He's there's. It a, up, by the I'm way. not making it up. I'm not. Maybe I am. <laughs> Maybe I am. <laughs> the internet might be. <laughs> <laughs> it's entirely possible I could be making some of this up. Um, there's more sheep than people, so Mike could be very much at home. Uh, there's something to do with a white-tailed seagull, which is making a resurgence. And the castles are ten a penny. Obviously, there's loads of them. Yeah, dumb vegan being the most well-known one. Um, and this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm go gonna on. Stop. That's got to be wrong. Dumb vegan. Dumb vegan. Dun, no, dun vegan. Dumb vegan. Dumb vegan. Not dumb vegan. When people ask me if I um, if I eat meat, I say no, I'm vegan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Duncan vegan. I'm vegan. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if and if you've if you've gone back to eating meat, then you're done vegan. Yeah, I'm, I'm done yeah, with done being with a it. vegan. Yeah, I'm done with being a vegan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very yeah. good. Um, apparently, there's some place <laughs> called Sliguchim Bridge or something. It was hard to read my handwriting. Um, where if you drink the water, it gives you eternal life, which I feel might was that the was that was that inspiration for Highlander? <laughs> it's by a hill where an uh, an old lady dies. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard of that place no but i can't even read my handwriting i can barely read what i've written down i've got one sheet stuffed for the stuff it's like uh, go on Stuart. Hit, hit us with it <laughs> Stuart, have you drunk the water uh, i've not drunk the water i have paddled in the water well if you didn't consume Sligichen. it you probably won't live forever i'm just saying yeah i, I will i will con i'll consume the water at Sligichen in the next Sligichen. Time there. very good very good I, well hang on let's slow that right down what's the correct one slig ach and Sligichen. Sligachan. Very good. It's 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 very commonly on Sky referred to as just slig. And apparently also just, um um there's um since nineteen seventy eight there's been um sixteen uh sightings of uh, Jesus's face on cowpats and only five of them still wow. exist. Uh there was six, but someone defrosted one and had it for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> just so they can get the feeling of your tasting notes, Duncan. That's what it yes. was. <laughs> yeah. Some, some, um, yeah. Some of those may be true. Feel free to do your own research, people. 
<laughs> these are some so so that when we take guests we we ply them with lots of random facts about sky so i am looking forward to telling people about the the leopard man and the and the, the jesus like cowpats on your new bus you as can, well you can drive You'll past his bus. house on the bus yeah just give him yeah. a little boop, boop. my guess for the blind dram 2 from paul looking at the list that yeah. he provides us with is it is an unpeated daliwan right it's very fruity on the nose. I think the Daliwan was sort of about 13 years old, 46%. That's my pick of that list. I think it's the Daliwan. I've nailed my colours to the mask. So I will be interested to find out at the end of this six-week thing, getting a lot of like apples and maybe some strawberries and some other stuff in there. Very fruity. I, I did enjoy that pronunciation, Duncan. Mm. Oh, go on then. Daliwan. Go on. Daliwan. Dal Dal of course it is Daliwan, yeah. It's so difficult to remember. I do, I do like Daliwan though. Daliwan is is pretty great. That's the Jamaican twist on it. It's Daliwan, yeah. It's Daliwan. We got Daliwan. We got a Daliwan. Daliwan. Maybe Daliwan. Me, me, Julie. Me go down, Julie. To the Daliwan. 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 It's a Daliwan. My favourite whiskey mispronunciation is from a friend of a friend. Yeah. Um, who referred to Bruchladi as Bruchladuch. Bruchladuch. <laughs> the thing is with some of them is it, it sometimes that's you like, like the advert um what's the yeah. one there's a moose loose you can also <laughs> you can also rad radish it up can't you because you can have brook brook laddish you know which is also obviously terrible yeah but you could really go the rad the thing is is that sometimes you especially with a dao yuan for example is you don't have them yeah. very often so you don't say it very often no like so unless no. you literally no, I, it's one of those that you just you barely it. ever drink i mean who even drinks the core range uh, one from Diageo. I mean, I think I've had one bottle of it. Oh, the Flora and Fauna, yeah. Yeah, I've had oh, one bottle uh... in like the last 10 years. It's decent, petered, but yeah. it's not something I would drink regularly. So it's like, I don't collect it. I don't drink it. It's one you would normally get as, a, as an indie. Yeah, yeah uh, but even then, I'd yeah. probably get something else instead. Although this is very fruity. Yeah. I'm saying it's the Aaron 24. You think it's the Aaron 24? Yep. <sighs> okay, that's a shout. I'm getting a bit of a Aaron note on there. Immediately took me to the 10, but like, Dialed up. Okay, it does. It is nice. Mm. Does it feel like it's a higher ABV than forty six? Not really to me. Mm, what did he put the Aaron down as? <laughs> the Aaron is twenty four year old, fifty five percent. Doesn't feel fifty five percent. So I'm going to stick to Dal Yuan, or as we now call it, Dal Yuan, Dal Yuan, Dal Yuan, Dal Yuan, Dal Yuan. That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> this show just writes itself. There's another song in that right there. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna Shaggy. We're gonna do a collab with Shaggy. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything, uh, Stuart, you'd me. like you'd like to share um, <laughs> with Julie? Is there anything you'd like to share <laughs> before we um, wrap up today, Stuart? Uh no. I think I have probably overshared so far already. I think there's there's been there's been plenty of sharing already. Um, yeah. No, thanks so much for having me on, guys. Um, it's been a pleasure. Um, this this it's been great to have whiskey. you. Um, I think that yeah, this is this is what whiskey should be about. It should just be about chatting nonsense, uh, yes, and just having a laugh. Uh, it's uh, that's yeah. that's making the website quote. This that's is what we should be about, chatting nonsense. nonsense. Yeah. Chat nonsense. <laughs> that's the point yeah. of whiskey. Um, yeah, no, it's been great. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Adam Breeden who messaged me this week to say he was following a car. But uh, the registration was K Tupud, and he thought he sent it over. So <laughs> you, you made me absolutely laugh my head off when that K2 came through. So Pud. thank you for that one. But um, yes, thank you for listening, everyone. As always, follow us in all the usual places at Honest or Malt on Instagram, Twitter, everything else. Go on the website at honestormalt.com. You can follow Duncan at Whiskey Tip, myself, Mike, at Whiskey Wings, and uh, follow Stuart on TikTok at Dram Dabbler. And uh, we will catch you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. <laughs>
for hey dog you and I do your thing Put it in the glass tea bag that sing Stuart Dick knows Duncan got it wrong He tell it straight as to what's going on yeah. Me dolly one Now you want I do your thing Put it in the glass tea bag that sing Me dolly one What's going on